You're listening to BS the Podcast with Benny Philhammer and Sal Zizo. Enjoy. I don't know if you I don't know if you knew this, Walker, but Benny's a huge Jurgen Klingsman fan, so <laughs> Present myself. Hey Walker, I'm Michael Parr. I play for Minnesota United. Welcome back to BS the Podcast. Do should we keep counting the episodes? We're, yeah, episode we're on episode four. four. Yeah, this is good. I, I like that. We're we're keep going up higher and higher, and uh, hopefully we'll get more and more downloads as we go. I like that. So we'll we'll keep doing it. We're episode four. So you sound like you have more energy tonight. Tonight, um, I'm hoping that it wasn't too tough of a day at the office. Yeah, I actually won a uh, free seminar at one of the huge real estate gurus. Uh, he's throwing a huge uh, like little pump up seminar. It's called the the Superstar Retreat at the Venetian. There's gonna be like five thousand real estate agents and. He picked me because I was the newest agent in the office, and it's a free five hundred dollars seminar that I get to go to. So wow, love that. That sounds absolutely dreadful to me, but <laughs> I am very happy for you. You sound a lot happier today, and you have um, a, a bit more oomph in your voice. So yeah. glad to see that. Uh, we're gonna have an awesome guest today, Walker Zimmerman, U.S. national team player, LAFC player, uh, first time All Star as yeah. well for MLS. So things are going great for him. Fan vote, right? Fan vote. That, starting that's 11. right. Yeah, fan yeah. eleven. That's fan right. 11. So that's awesome for him. I'm I'm glad to see it. I played with him last year, so it's going to be an exciting podcast to talk about with him. And we'll we'll get into some funny uh, January camp stories that I've heard of that I want to get uh, right into with him. And and we'll obviously ask him questions about what's going on with with uh, not only the Gold Cup team but the Women's World Cup as well. Ask him some questions there and yeah. we'll actually talk about VAR this time. I know we mentioned we were going to talk about it last time, but we never got around to it. That's right. I mean, too much too many in, uh, interesting yeah. things to talk about last week <laughs> yeah. with Sasha. We forgot about VAR. Yeah. Uh we'll 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 delve into that and I also think that we must let the audience know that Ike's interrogation being the great hit that it was last week, we will have it as a permanent fixture moving yeah. forward. So, welcome Ike to the podcast as well. Yeah. Ike's uh was very funny last week and hopefully hopefully comes up with some harder questions though. I kinda I, I'd like to hear a couple uh people plead the fifth on some of these. Yeah, right now it's been too easy. We we gotta yeah. we really gotta ask Ike to, to come at a different level now with some of these questions. Yeah. So hopefully it just progressively gets harder and harder. Yeah. Maybe when we have some controversial guests too, you can kinda squeeze them in to fit their personality, you know? Yeah, we'll see how Walker does uh, yeah. today yeah. on it. But um, let's let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Walker Zimmerman, thank you so much for joining us here at the Gold Cup National Team Hotel. Here he is, folks. Thank you very much. This is probably the highest honor I've received in quite some time. Yeah, you should yeah, feel it, that way. You should it, feel that way. You you have um, we we've been building up to this because I came in. He's had how many views in uh, on or what is it listens? I guess downloads. <laughs> downloads. Downloads. Downloads would be. Uh, good. Ike's been bringing it up, and then Sash. I don't think he has gotten all the way up there yet. So Walker, we'll see if you can break the yeah. one thousand. Yeah, I don't know that that's gonna happen, but uh, I'm we'll all for it. Well, let's get right into it. Um, we are two games into the Gold Cup. You guys had, you have two wins. First game, start a little slow, 1-4-0, 4-0, right? Am yeah. I right? And then uh, the, the second game, you guys played really well, 6-0. You had to concede a goal. That's got to feel pretty good for you. Yeah, that's obviously one of the most important stats as a, as a defender. And then ultimately to get the 10 goals in two games is, is something that I think Greg's really pleased with. Yeah. I, I feel, I know Walker pretty well. I played with him last year, and I have to ask you this question. How jealous are you of Aaron Long having scored two goals last game? Though? I tell you what, I, I mean, the, the second goal, I think I was yelling at him from for probably fifteen to twenty seconds prior to that that play happening to I get saw back. Him. Yeah, so Tim drops in to get you know a ball from Zach, and obviously I'm fine with with Aaron staying the left back spot to get the ball from Zach. Where I had the issue was not even on the first give and go, but when he played it inside and went forward again. 
at 5-0 in the 90th minute, I about lost my mind. And I was forced <laughs> yelling at, at Tim and Michael. I was like, get Aaron back! Uh, Aaron's but then a, all, a pretty sudden, funny guy. I played oh with him at, at New York. Yeah. He's great. Hey, hey I, this He's is, great. I'm taking the quote from Walker straight from from his mouth. Shooters got to shoot, bro. Shooters got to shoot. Even if it's with his chest. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was another thing. I can't imagine ever trying to chest that ball. <laughs> why? Out. Why did he not just want to head I, that? He said he said because he thought the spin would throw it off, and I'm like, wouldn't it throw it off more with your chest than your head? But he was I, inside he, the goal. He, he clearly did. Knew you what see he was the doing play now. in the corner where he was kind of like dribbling, yeah, he like, wanted he was to like dice cutting someone. people up? Yeah, he wanted to <laughs> dice someone. I love it. I love it. No, I'm. Yeah. Uh, not really jealous. I'm, I'm really happy for him, especially to not only get his first international goal, but get two. And you know, it came out. He was the first defender in men's national team history to score two goals in a game. Can you believe wow. that? Ever? Ever. Is that wow. not the craziest That's thing impressive. you've ever heard? That is crazy. I, I mean, it's not like, uh, it is difficult to score two goals as a defender, yeah. but, that, but it's never history, happened yeah, before. Yeah. That is pretty insane. Yeah. What I like, what I liked about that game though, it was, it was Good to see the U.S. finally blow out a team that you know we should have blown out. I just thought, I just thought the whole game, you guys. I mean, the first half, you know, there were times, but the whole second half was just like complete domination. It was yeah. really fun to watch. Yeah, and the goals were actually really quality yeah. goals from build up Absolutely. and movement, and, and it was yeah, definitely, definitely a fun game to be a part of there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there could have even been more goals. I mean, the the play that yeah. Paul Arnola yeah. had as well Post on the, the left crossbar, side, yeah. hit the crossbar. I thought, I think he's been playing really well. So it's been nice to see the team starting to gel more and more. And uh, I know that this game will probably be the hardest one of the group. I think Panama's looked pretty good, um, and and obviously. Uh, you know, in quali- or in, uh, in the knockout rounds, there'll be some tough competition as well. But it's good to see the team kind of gelling and, and, and starting to feel more comfortable with one another. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, yeah, Panama, like you said, definitely going to be our hardest game in the group, fighting to win the group. And that's kind of been an initial goal that we put forth coming into camp. So I think the guys are ready for it and it uh, should be a good test for us. Yeah. Um, I, I want to go back to one thing. Uh, so Greg Burhalter took over. Uh, I th- was January his first yeah. camp as head coach? Yep. And so I've heard some some stories. I think, like I said, you guys are, are, are building into it and you guys are feeling more comfortable with one another. And I think team building sometimes is one of the big things that help you guys become a team. I think every team that I've been on has had good team building events. And I've heard some stories that yeah. there were some funny team building activities. One where you guys carried a tree, I don't know, for how far? Yeah, this... Uh... This was actually probably one of the coolest experiences of my life. Also, probably one of the most dreadful experiences <laughs> of my life. Uh, and, and looking back, like I'm, I'm definitely proud of it. But we got the the chance to go to the Navy SEALs kind of headquarters out in Oof. San Diego, and so shout out to San Diego. Yeah, go shout on. out. Yeah, congrats to them. Uh, so the the first you know week of gold or of January camp, you get a schedule for the whole month. So we look ahead at our schedule. We're like, oh, day off, like team event. Like, oh, this is gonna be great. Like, relax. Maybe we'll go to the beach in San Diego. <laughs> like, you know, whatever. So then we hear like that day. Yeah, we're going to the Navy base. And I'm thinking, okay, like it's still our day off. We had a scrimmage or something the day before. You know, probably just gonna do some team building exercises. I'm thinking like helping people get over walls and things like that in the woods. <laughs> So we get there and they start playing, you know, these PowerPoint presentations of just like, you know, mentality and like, just these guys were insane talking to us, telling us stories. And then like, all right, so today we're going to divide you guys up into teams and you guys are going to have to do uh, some of our Navy SEALs training. And we're like, okay, like certainly they're going to cut it short first. Or something. Hold your breath for 10 minutes out. underwater. I dropped out right there. Yeah, this was... This was... 100% would have dropped out. Once I heard Navy SEALs yeah. exercise, Forget I might have just... Started walking back yeah. home. I yeah. would have had, my heart would have been beating faster than had I known we were doing the beep test that day. <laughs> and what's funny is looking back, you know, we're all smiling at each other, like looking forward to it. Like, oh, like, yeah, Navy SEALs training. This is going to be cool. <laughs> and so I think we're in about six or seven teams of six to seven guys. And that includes staff, trainers, whatever. And so we go outside and we start jogging. Like, all right, on the jog. We're like, okay. So we jog like, kind of through the base. We get to these, these showers that are turned like coldest temperature possible. <laughs> and they're like, all right, you got to walk through, spin around through the showers until there's no dry spot left on anyone's clothes. So we go through, I think three times, we're just all spinning around. They're yelling at us, yelling at us the whole time. And then we all take off on another jog on the beach. We're like, okay, like this is kind of getting a little serious. 
jog <laughs> jog up this jog up this sandbar like hill, and we get to these logs. And there's just like you know seven logs on the ground, one for each team. They have us you know start doing push ups next to the log, and then hold the log over our heads. And while we're holding the log over our heads, they called for like a, a team captain to come up and get the instructions of what we were gonna do. And they basically told us then that we were gonna be going, I think it was a mile and a half each direction, carrying the log in a chest carry. So we had our <laughs> arms straight out in front of us with, I think the logs were about 200 pounds. 200 pounds. Because, because it had rained, so they were a little waterlogged. So they oh, admit, they're, maybe they're normally like Between what, seven people? Yeah. So you're like, okay, that's not terrible. I mean, that's about 30 Keeping pounds it, per person for a mile and a half. It's yeah. hard enough to just, no. mile and a half back and forth. So you're three miles down, total. Yeah, down and then back. So three miles total on sand? Yeah, on sand. Carrying 30 pounds. Yeah. I can't carry myself so, three miles on sand. So Yeah, so we take off and we're walking. And at this point, you're thinking like, okay, certainly like we're all athletes. We're in good shape. This will be like hard, but like I'm going to get through it. You'll no get through what. it, yeah. About halfway down to the mile and a half, I was like, I can't even make it there. Like how on earth am I going to be able to make it back? And so we're like all, you know, dropping the log. We're figuring out, trying to rearrange our team to – to get the best like height discrepancy. Of course I have like, you know, myself, Sean Johnson, Tyler Miller on a team, but then we also have, you know, some trainers who are like five, five and <laughs> like, and like Benny's like, level. Yeah. Yeah. We got so. a couple of yeah, five, on five. our log, yeah. you know? Uh, so the height discrepancy was a, a big killer for our team. At the end of the day, we made it down there. We got like a two minute break to drink some water. And then we had a race back was how we had to get back. And so, I see Greg, Greg Berhalter, Michael Bradley on a log, Aaron Long, and at the start, they just start taking off with this log. And I'm like, are you serious? Greg was good at it? Greg was great at it. Dude, Greg I mean, is so wow. skinny now. Yeah, but he's got that mentality on him, you know? He's just kind of... Now, there was some discrepancy on, on who actually won because one of our team doctors actually dropped off of their log and started jogging behind them, rooting them on. And so I they were like was, they were better without him. Yeah, I felt like, I felt like that was an advantage, you know. Six people drop, but they drop their weakest links. They can keep moving. Otherwise, you gotta wow. just put the log on the ground and then pick it back up. But man, that was a great great experience. Never want to do it again. But I mean, it was I got scars to prove it. Actually, dude, oh, it's man. a great experience for me because I didn't take part in it. Was a lot it's of your guys' arms just like so, Sean, so sore after? Yeah, Sean Johnson and I, we have some scars on our left forearm because our our log wow. was just ripping right through us, um, but yeah, guys, we're just dead. That's that's, that's a good yeah. story. Good, good I heard an, actually, I actually heard another story about you at another. Maybe it was your first camp where you had to sing in front of everyone, and I actually heard your voice was pretty spot on. From from what I've, I don't remember who told me the story, but I don't know if you got up and sang like a Justin Bieber song or something. Yeah, but. so. Yeah, the night before the game, we did our performances, and I yeah. sang uh, A Whole New World from Aladdin, which I just oh, saw okay. yesterday. Amazing. What movie. a tune. Pretty good. I watched yeah. it with my kids. Very, Very good. good. So yeah. I saw saw that yesterday, but I sang A Whole New World the night before the game, and then after the game, we won. It was my, my first cap. Uh, we won 1-0 against Jamaica and Chattanooga, and I got an encore, and I don't know if that's ever happened before, <laughs> but uh, I, I stood I up don't there. Think it has. Wait, in Chattanooga? Yeah. We Why do I not together? remember this then? We I was there then. Yeah, I sing Love Yourself. Justin Bieber. Afterwards. Yeah. Oh, I think I do remember this. Yeah. And, uh, That's right. I, I always, dude, in those moments, I I think I get more yeah. like, freaked awkward. out you than feel the person. I, I just want to like, yeah. hide in my hoodie. I, I can't take it. it but is, yeah, it he, is was, painful he was sometimes, good. For sure. It's too bad you didn't get called in with Jurgen because I think Jurgen would do, uh, you, you would just learn a, an instrument. That was team building. You just go, no. everybody had to learn a team an instrument and sing kumbaya around the around the fireplace so you just break out my recorder <laughs> i don't know period. if you i don't know if you knew this walker but benny's a huge Jurgen Klinsman fan so uh, that's, that's why you, you yeah got i think i've read that in some articles he had some high yeah. praises for him i think really um, big. all right let's let's move along here let we should we should hit up on uh the women's national team they just won a huge game against spain actually in the first knockout round did you watch any of that I did. We had a, a kind of a gym session today, but it was on the TV, so I was in and out watching it. I saw both of the, the PK goals. Right. Um, interesting bar decision on the second one. I actually didn't see the PK call. I saw the highlights of the game. I didn't see the PK call, so I didn't. I can't uh, attest to what I thought about it. But yeah, no, I thought Spain played 
actually really well. I had seen some games of Spain before, and they look like a pretty good team, yeah. other than they have a hard time scoring goals. They yeah. don't really they, have. They moved like a, it well. Their their center back was very good, just yeah. cracking people, honestly. Yeah. But again, good great job from our from our women's team to to respond and meet up. Uh, with that challenge, you get two goals, you get the win, and then obviously that France game is going to be really exciting to watch. Yeah, I think that's what everybody's kind of looking forward to in the in the Women's World Cup, the two heavyweights. Yeah, superpowers. I think it's I think they're the two favorites right now. Obviously, France the home team, and U.S. being the favorite overall. So it should be a really exciting game. What do you who do you have in that game, Sal? What do you think is going to happen? I would have to say the U.S. is gonna win i think they're the most dominant team i mean the host country always has a little bit of a uh, an edge but i think the u.s is just too dominant but i also wanted to bring up that um after the game i saw did you see that clip of what martha said about the yeah last night yeah pretty pretty good i mean that was pretty cool to see that she she had a lot of passion in that speech what was the what was the closing line there something about Crying. You have to cry now to be happy later. Yeah, was, smile later. Yeah. To, to smile, smile later. Like yeah, it was good. Very good. Yeah. So, Benny, That's you awesome. probably understood it. Yeah. I actually, did, I yeah. actually, when I I watched it when I got home last night from our game and I was in bed and my wife was already asleep, so I actually watched it with the subtitles. So I actually yeah. didn't hear her say. Was it in Portuguese? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. She said yeah. it all in Portuguese. It was, in Portuguese. It was very good. Yeah. So yeah, that, I think the the women's World Cups had a lot of good stories, and one thing that we failed to talk about last time was the VAR. We said we were going to talk about that. Yeah. And VAR has been a big topic with the Women's World Cup as well. Uh, mostly negative, unfortunately. Well, why Why is it, are they like, I mean, I don't know, why are they dissecting it so much? Why is it becoming such a thing for, for this Women's World Cup? I mean, I feel like it's been used so much more often than any other tournament that it has, you know? I don't know. I, I feel, heard I heard some stat that like it was used more in the first two games in group play than it was in the entire last really? World Cup or something like that. I, I didn't yeah. even know that. All I know is we obviously play with a VAR in our league, and there's times that they mess up. There's times that they get something right. Um, but I think the first time that it was internationally used was in the World Cup, right, for the men's. Yeah. And I, and I think it was used pretty well. There weren't that many bad decisions. Yeah, there's some handballs that. You don't know, you know, how maybe one person calls it one way, another person calls it the other. But I feel like there's been some really bad calls in this in this World Cup, and I'm I'm wondering yeah. what you think. Like, it, it, is it is it the VAR that's the issue? Do you think it's the person that's looking at it, the referee? Like, well, what, why is it that it causes so much? Here, here's what's crazy to me is we actually had a, a refs meeting prior to Gold Cup, and as you know, there's no VAR in the right. Gold Cup. And so, like, why is that? And the ref who was kind of giving the, the presentation said the refs did not have enough time to do adequate training to use VAR. Really? So that makes me wonder for the women's world cup, you know, some of the issues is it's taking a long time to even get to the video screen to make those decisions. Um, I know we've gotten better, obviously in MLS, they did a good job in the world cup of kind of keeping it, you know, to as little time as possible. But I'm wondering if, if they are, more recently trained right for that women's world cup and maybe that's why it's kind of b- becoming a little bit more you know taking a longer time some inconsistent calls some questionable decisions um but i thought i thought that was very interesting because because var has been around for a few years now it's like how are how are referees not being trained in time for a big tournament like the gold cup yeah no i i agree i think that i think for me <coughs> var is a great thing I'll tell you my opinion about it. I think VR is a great thing. I think referees are imperfect, obviously, as is any human. But what I wish would happen is that FIFA would just make rules black and white. I know not everybody's with this, but for me, it's it, it'd be the easiest thing. For even if like you're a defender, Ike's a defender, right? Sal, you played as a defender at the end of your career. If I was a defender, I would rather know. That a handball is a handball, and and what what accounts for that, and what is not called a handball, as opposed to this might be a handball, this might not be a handball. How far is the ball when it gets kicked? Where is your hand exactly on your body? All this kind of stuff, and then it becomes a completely subjective thing by the referee, and all that gray area causes all the controversy. And I almost feel like FIFA enjoys the controversy. You know, like people talking about the sport, people talking about the mistakes. Whereas for me. 
I would say if the ball hits your arm in the box, it's a penalty other than if your hand is Tuck literally in, touching whatever. your body, yeah. is, is yeah. within your body or touching your sides. So at least a defender now, maybe it sucks, right? Maybe if your hand is six inches from your body, but there's space there and it hits it, that's a penalty. But at least now you know. I'd rather know, you know? Even if it's a bad rule, I'd rather know than have a rule that you really don't know what's going to get called one way or another because yeah. it's just there's there's too much subjectivity in it. Yeah, maybe it would keep guys from, you know, when they're sliding to block across, you still don't see their arms tucked in. They'll put their arms out, and then it gets called 50% of the time, so sometimes it's worth taking a chance in a, in a dire moment. But, right. yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's would tough that be, because... As a defender, would that be so detrimental if, let's say... I'm, I'm, I'm FIFA and I just make the rule, look, if it hits your arm from shoulder down, right, not counting the shoulder, but down, and your arm is not either within your body or on your side, if there's a space in between your body and your hand, it's going to be called a handball. Yeah. Would that be very no, I, detrimental or would you like that? I, I think I am probably agreeing with you here yeah. just to have a clear understanding of, of what is a PK, what's not. I mean, we got told even again in the same meeting the other week that if we're a defender and there's a forward going in on goal in the box, if we try and if we foul them without making an attempt for the ball, it's a red card. Right. But if we were to make an attempt for the ball, it's a yellow card. Yeah. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, if I'm one on one, I'll just slide him from behind and take yeah. a yellow card rather than try and like you know tactically bump him, Grab his pull jersey his jersey or down. Something. Yeah. That might not even be a, a real foul. You know, just trying to throw him off balance, but right. I endanger myself getting a red. So yeah. even that is just, I mean, you want to have the clarity so you can know how to, how to play. Yeah. But, but that's soccer. I just feel like there's so much gray area, even on, even on a regular call. I mean, a regular foul, like it's like pass interference in the NFL. I mean, yeah, but now they've changed say? it. They've changed that in the NFL. Now you can, Did, you can challenge a pass interference call. We'll see oh, yeah, they have, how yeah, much yeah. it remains subjective. And now maybe it's more objective, but I, I don't well, know, man. I, I, that's I like going to be a circus too now. Anything. Watch. That's going to be a problem with the, with the NFL now too. Yeah, so we'll see. All right, let's uh, let's move on though. We, we're not going to be able to change VAR. We're not uh, Infantino, so um, <laughs> I, I want to ask you a little bit about LA. You guys are on a ridiculous run right now. Um, obviously, I was there with you last year. It was our first year as a team. It was a pretty good year, although I think all of us felt like there was more to be had. Mm -hmm. And now you guys have put it all together. I've said this to a lot of guys that have talked to me. I feel like there's obviously no doubt that you guys are the best team in the league right now. Um, and the thing that's more impressive is that for me, if you go through the 11 starters, I feel like probably 10 are playing above their average. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Or? Yeah. No, I think I would agree with that. And it kind of is reminiscent of what Leicester City did, although – you know, you look at what they're in terms of individual performers, right. how they played above what was expected of them. I think that same thing does hold true for our team. And I think, too, just the growth from from year one to year two. I know you aren't around anymore, but I would say last year was always we started out the year not knowing exactly how good we were going to be. Right. Like we hadn't played any games as the season went on and going into the playoffs. I think we recognized, hey, we're a really good team. Uh, we could probably make a run. But now the mentality this year is we're the best team in the league. We have a chance to win all three trophies. We got to go after it and get it. And I think even the guys who aren't training or who aren't playing are actually training really well to yeah. try and you know break into the team, get ready for an Open Cup game. So right now, I think you're right. Everything's really kind of clicking well for us. Guys are responding, um, having very good seasons. And uh, I think that's ultimately led from from Carlos, and you look at his output, and it's just insane what he's doing right now. So I, 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 I go ahead, Sal. I well, I was gonna say like it's it's actually kind of crazy how how it's so similar to what's you know happened in Atlanta. So that first year was pretty similar first year to what you guys had last year. And then this pat this the last year now, right. they like really took it to another level and uh yeah, ultimately winning MLS Cup. And I just feel like there's so many similarities just based on, you know, what I see from you guys this season and what, you know, Atlanta was last year. It's 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 a it's a winning formula and you guys are doing it right. So I, I really think you guys are probably the favorites to win MLS Cup, but 
you don't want to get ahead of yourselves. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I, so we asked this question, I think, in the last podcast. If Carlos were to finish with 30 goals and 20 assists, would, it be, would he be on the long list of Balone d'Or at the end of the year? <laughs> Do you think there's a chance? I, I don't think there's a chance. I don't think they even... They don't even... I, I think they our would... Our league doesn't even register on the Balone d'Or I, I think they, they, would, I think they would feel like insulted, you know? <laughs> Like they just yeah. couldn't, yeah. they couldn't do that. I don't think. I've said that I think Carlos is playing at a level where if he went to Barcelona right now, he would be, he'd be better than Coutinho. He'd be just, he'd be right there with Messi. I really yeah. believe that right now. Yeah. Benny, you always said the best player you ever played with was Van der Vaart when you were out oh, in Hamburg. Played with. Is, yes. Yes. So Carlos, does he? Is he up there? Carlos was not as good as Van der Vaart was. When I prime. played in Hamburg and okay. how he played last year, I think. Okay. Okay. But I think Carlos is playing at a higher level than Vanderbart did when I played with Vanderbart. Now. Okay. Carlos, okay. I think he's playing at a ridiculous level. Yeah. yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah, I, it, it's it's just funny. I mean, how things work. Just piggybacking on what you said, I feel like go back to preseason last year. I couldn't. I feel like I have a pretty good eye for soccer. I couldn't tell that. Carlos was going to be nearly this dominant in MLS. I didn't think Diego was yeah. going to be nearly this good in MLS. Yeah. And they both, I mean, Diego started off from day one last year. And they both, I mean, done really, really well. Yeah. So it's And it's, and it's to interesting, see. too. Like, I think Diego, for me, I think that's almost a result of, of the system that we play in, yeah. is how productive he is. Right. With Carlos, I think it's always just been like, he's as good as he wants to be. Mm -hmm. And I think for him, I think the chip on his shoulder is he wants to be the MVP of the league. And he said that since week one. And I don't think I heard him even talk about that last year. No, never. You know? But it's like this year, it's like, I want to be the best player in the league. I want to prove it to my team and to the fans. And, like, that's been his goal. And so I think there's no complacency ever. Whereas last year, maybe there were times where, you know, we're winning a game and he's able to kind of rest up a little bit for the next one or you know, just not that he wasn't trying, but kind of managing himself. And this year it's like, no, I'm going to blow everyone's expectations out of the water. Well, I'm hoping that uh, we're going to move on to a new segment, but I'm hoping that this guy does really well in Gold Cup, sticks around for a few more games because we're playing LAFC in a couple of weeks, maybe even less, right? It's like 10 days or something. It's on yeah, July yeah, 3rd. Yeah. Did we mention uh, All Star? I mean, congrats on the All Star. All Star, bid. thank yeah. you, thank you. Congrats. Uh, is that your first? Time. That's my first one. First yeah. All -Star. Congratulations. Yeah, nice. Um, that'll be fun. And but yeah, I hope he I hope he does well in Gold Cup and stays here for a while so that I have to see July third. It'll nice. be uh, it'll be a fun game to play against. That'll be great. Uh, I'd, I'd all love, yeah, all the old teammates for sure. Um, should we move on to the, the most fun part of uh, the entire podcast as Ike has been patiently waiting, almost falling asleep during this conversation? In the shadows, yeah. Let's bring him out. All right, Ike, Unmute go ahead, yourself. present yourself, uh, remind every. I think everybody kind of knows what the game is, but go ahead. Present myself. Hey, Walker, I'm Michael Parr. I play for Minnesota United. Uh, <laughs> if you didn't know. Yeah, uh, I, I, don't, I never knew who you were when you were playing next to me uh, two Januarys ago. So. You know what? I am very easily to be mistaken and overlooked. So it's okay. It's the story of my life. Um, this game is Plead the Fifth. Um, and so I'm going to ask you a question. No, it's not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Plead the whoa. Fifth. It's called Ike's Interrogation. Well, yes, but we're, the game right, is right, Plead right. the Fifth. So, sorry. Yes. All right. <laughs> so you can turn down one of the questions. Okay. Uh, you can choose not to answer it, but Sasha, the last week's guest, answered every question like a champ. So he was on the hot seat. Okay. We'll see what you got. All right. Um, the see first question that I have is, how much better is your quality of life in L.A. compared to Dallas? And don't lie to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quality of life. Um, pretty close to infinitely. <laughs> Uh, is the honest answer. I think looking at uh, the only thing that I think I appreciated a lot about Dallas was the convenience of doing a lot of things, whereas LA might be a little bit more difficult to get around, run regular errands. Um, but certainly being near the beach, the weather, um, the atmosphere in the stadium, the, the style of play, all those things kind of make quality of life go up for me. Yeah, then that's fair. Manhattan Beach or Frisco, Texas, understandable. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, on a neutral ground, 
Who wins between LAFC, the best team in the world, and the U.S. men's national team? On a neutral ground. Um, hmm. <laughs> Good question. I Good really question. like that question. Yeah. For me, it's an easy answer, but I'll let uh, Walker answer. Yeah. I think there's – God, there's so many factors in the, in the national team too. So it's like, are, are you together for a long time? Is it all players available? Is it, you know, are you dealing with injuries? Yeah. Both sides. Right. Um, Best I'm, 11. You can use your imagination. Yeah. Both teams can prepare as long as they'd like. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the national team. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and say that's completely incorrect. Ooh. LA this could FC be a debate. Right now is a better team than the national team. I, I, I think we can right have a now, long debate but, about this, but we must move on to the game bidding. Go ahead, move on. We can come back to it if you'd like. Uh, all right, more likely to happen in an, or no, more likely to happen often in an LAFC game. Mark Anthony K altercations or Diego Rossi flops. <laughs> That's got to be one of your best questions you've ever asked on this on this has segment. To, well, we've it has to be. For like, I yeah, mean, the fact like, that you even thought of that question is incredible. Yeah, um, I watch a lot of LFC I games. I mean, you're good for you're good for two to three Mark Anthony K altercations for sure. Uh, God, I'm gonna go with Diego Rossi uh, head head flail yes. back on the on the. <laughs> Thank one. you. Yeah, he looks like he just got shot in the yeah. back of his legs. He looks hey, like. Hey, he but to be fair, what's kind of unfortunate is now sometimes when he actually does get fouled, he does not get the calls because every dude, ref knows that happened with Latif year one in Kansas City. Yeah. Latif well, would dive all the time, and then when he actually got fouled, yeah. he wouldn't get a call so anymore. So I think it actually kind of goes against him. Right. It wasn't just diving. He would lay motionless. Yeah. Like, we he thought still, he was he actually he dead. That like, he does that on the training field. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we're working on it. We're working oh, on it. oh, I know. Poor little Latif. He still misses Benny, though, for sure. <laughs> yeah. To be f- as, as much as I dislike Benny, he does impact the locker room in the positive, so I understand that. <laughs> um, all right. Next question. My personal favorite. Uh, who was better in the air between Air Zimmerman and Daddy Opara? Ooh, wow. That's a great question. That's a great question. <sighs> I, I have I have an answer, but I want you I would love to. <laughs> well, I, I think we're each going to be entitled to our own opinion here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take myself. I, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to look at it. I'd actually like to see the, the percentage at, uh, on Aerial yeah. Duels 1. Yeah, I want to the, check that out. The only set I remember was 2016, and I and I saw I had a higher percentage than you, no, so no. I'm just gonna stick with that. But I don't know what it is okay. this year. Hey, I well, just a little tidbit on that. When Walker was uh, in the in the midst of his contract negotiations with LAFC, and he he wanted you know more money like every other player does in the world, he ended up just scoring four goals in a row in four <laughs> games. And His just like, yeah, went, pay me up, my money up, now. Up, up, up. Yep, that trend <laughs> went work, way though. up. Yep, I remember. I remember that. I, I will say first off, it's you might have had a higher percentage because you had more opportunities. Because I'm like Reva Silent over there in his prime. No one even came to my side of the field. Uh, yeah, but, that might be true. That might be true. You got you actually. You two have scored two yeah. similar goals that come to my head. Ones where you kind of dribbled up and hit it, and it almost was yeah. like a screwball into the yeah, goal. So Didn't yeah. you just have one of those? Walker's recently? Walker? Salt Lake. Yeah, I did. Walker I did. did. Yeah. Yeah. And I know Ike's Ike was way further his... out, but you well, had that bicycle on me though. Yeah. yeah well, I, I would say this. Yet. When it comes to being in the air, you're better at just running through people like they're not even there. Like you just, you see green and you don't care if you even get hurt. Whereas I'm like, mm, there's like three bodies in the way. I might just shouldn't take this one off. Walker's going up there like, like he's in traffic in the NBA. I'm like, whoa, like calm yourself, guy. You're yeah. not gonna out, you're not maybe gonna I'll learn goalie. that in a few years to kind of yeah. settle down. You, you, you maybe wise up a bit, one, but no. Once, you, once uh, you get kicked in the head in a quarterfinal Open Cup game <laughs> I, I would, against yeah, this yeah, guy, was, by the way. Was, yeah, yeah that was that'll change your life. Max Rudy, yeah. Yeah. All right, last question. Does Vela break the single season goals record in MLS this year? Wow. I, I'm really happy that was the fifth because I thought they were supposed to get harder, and I feel like this could yeah. way up. I had some fifth? other ones. That I wanted to keep you off the hot seat. Was it? I wanted to keep you off the hot seat. Yeah, yeah. It's, I like it. it's more fun now. when you can answer yeah. questions. 
Now, the most awkward one for me was for sure the LAFC national team question. Yeah. I was in well, the number two, and I was kind of nervous of what was right. to come after. <laughs> well, uh, don't worry, I had a ball halter and Bob Bradley question on here as well, but I, I took that one off. Well, if he doesn't play uh, the fifth on this one, that no, one might no, come in. I'll definitely answer this one for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'll answer this one for sure. Who has a nicer, nicer head? <laughs> uh, I think I think Carlos does break the scoring record this what year. What is it? Thirty one. Thirty, I think. Is thirty? Thirty, I think. 30 and thirty four. So he year, needs I, a thirty. He needs thirty one. Was it thirty? Yeah. Thirty or thirty one. Um, I, I think he does. I think that um, mainly because I think that we're gonna score more goals than Atlanta did. I'm shooting for that record too. Yeah. Um, and so I think looking at even some set pieces, some PKs along the way. I know Joseph still had his share. But I just think Carlos is on a mission, and I, I don't think anyone can get in his way. Well, I agree with it. that, man. Man, this yeah. guy is I, on a mission. I think it's great, too, like the position. he. I mean, he's not like a Joseph yeah. who played forward and just got like tons of one-time goals. I mean, he scored some great goals this year. It. So it'll be impressive if he does. Do we have any final questions for WZ? No, I, will, I, will let it, I will let it go. I oh, enjoyed my run that. here. <laughs> All right, well, I thank you, Ike. Beads a little bit. <laughs> thank you, Ike, for Ike's interrogations. I think that was uh, some great questions there and well answered as well. Thanks, Ike. Sal, what do you ha- what, what do we have left? Do we have anything left for Walker, or are we going to let this man go to his uh, treatment? We could let this man go. Um... I thought you were going to mention something about your boy Aaron Long. We did already kind of talk about him. He did. Well, yeah. he what loves a, Aaron Long. Yeah, what a guy. Great guy. We've yeah. gotten Good guy. He's, he's every, another every great locker room guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Super sarcastic. Can be a little bully yes. to Jordan Moore sometimes, but that's just his personality. <laughs> I thought I thought your roommate over there, Jordan, played great coming into that game, he, by the way. No, he really did. Definitely, yeah. definitely made an impact. Um, I mean, you got speed like that. Kills. Yeah. Hey, going back to Aaron Long, I play with him sometimes in the offseason. Yeah, you did you did pickup games before yeah. he was Aaron Long, right? Well, he was already Aaron Long. He was I think he was it he was just defender of the year this year, right? Yeah, this past year. Yeah, I so think it was it was, it was after, this offseason. No, it was this oh, offseason. Was? Yeah. No, but you also played with him like previous offseason. You're right. Too. I did. Yeah. I did. But uh But you didn't know who he, he was. He can't get though. the best of me in a pickup game, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> you you can you can quote me on that and ask him later. All right. All right, we will. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Walker, so much for, for coming on our podcast. We're going to try and shoot the 1,000 uh, viewer Let's record. Let's do here. it, man. I'm going to be sharing this you, thing. you got to share yeah. with all – I'm trying – dude, we're, we got to expand. I, it can't be do just I get, the – Do I get like a, a gift or a, you, you a need bonus? a commission? I know you got commission? me. You, know, you had a nice payday to get me I'll, on here, but what I'll, about the bonus for the 1,000? I'll let you know <clears throat> how many LAFC fans or LA uh, – People from California and LA, you can bring on, and maybe national team fans as well. You can wow. tweet it out to whoever you want, and uh, and we'll have a conversation about it later. Can't wait. Maybe you can ask Will Farrell. Maybe oh. he could just do a little quick retweet. Wow. <laughs> by the way, well, by the way, we should also mention that Walker has his own podcast. Oh, through, does he? Through the LAFC umbrella. Yeah, what's it called? That's right. The oh, locker, the I have seen room. that. The locker room. I have room. seen that. Yeah. Have he's seen had that. some good guests. I've listened to a few of those podcasts. They're they're very good. Although he's on his own there, so it's a little bit more difficult. It takes more tact to to you know have a good conversation when you're on your own there. So work on those interview skills. You know, we'll try and get some people from Kansas City to start listening to that as well. Yeah, let's do it. All right, well, Walker, thanks a lot. Uh, good luck with the rest of camp, and obviously with the rest of the season with LAFC. Doesn't doesn't seem like either either team really needs much luck at this point, but um, yeah. we will be watching. And good luck against Panama. Hopefully, you score again against them. You're right, your other goal was against them. That's right. That's right. So I'll be there. I'll be there watching the game. Awesome. Can't yeah. wait. Thanks for having me on, guys. All right. Man. Good luck. Well, that was awesome. Uh, thank you so much again for Walker showing up and uh, allowing us to take a little bit of his time here at uh, Gold Cup uh, U.S. National Team Camp. I think he was a really exciting and, and, and honest uh, interview so far, and I, I think it was, it was tough for him to answer some of those questions. Yeah, I thought he had some, some great insight, though. I, I know you, you took to an exception on one of his responses about um, the national team currently beating LAFC you want to kind of talk about what yeah I mean you... I mean it's so I think it's hard for people to accept that because it's the national team and so you would think national teams have to be better than club teams but 
what people don't realize, or at least this is how I think, is that there's such an advantage to being able to train with a player and, and teammates and, and as a coach, being able to coach a team every day. Yeah. And I think that is so difficult to have, you know, people really understand how important that is and the chemistry that you build. And so you look at a team like LAFC and you look at a team like the national team, and I think both of them have unbelievable qualities and a bit unbelievable talent, you know, uh, but the, yeah, the understanding back, on the field, I mean, you just see you, it, the, you just yeah. go back to, so I was part of LAFC's first year and the difference between the chemistry and the cohesiveness of the team in year one to year two is so drastic. And yeah. so, yeah, if you have the national team for a year and they train together every day and, and Greg has story. that yeah. opportunity to do that, then we're talking a different ball game. But right now the national team has been together for two weeks. Uh, during Gold Cup, it's been six months, not even six months or six months or so since Greg's been the coach. Whereas yeah. Bob's been there for a year and a half. The guys trained every day for a year and a half together. I mean, it makes such a big difference. So I think that's where I'm coming from in terms of that. I, I, th I think it'd be a very, very difficult game for, for U.S. soccer to try and beat LAFC right now. Yeah. I mean, with that said, hopefully the national team just keeps on improving uh, every game and, and keeps go getting better, you know, throughout this gold cup and hopefully they can take care of Panama, get first in their group and see what happens from there. But yeah, I'd love, I'd love to see, I mean, it'd be cool to see a, a U.S. Mexico final. Um, I think it's shaping up to be that way right now because the Mexico side has Jamaica, or sorry, Jamaica's on the U S side. So Mexico side has Costa Rica. Now they're playing against each other in the quarters on the opposite quarters, it's uh, Canada against Haiti, who's the surprise yeah. team in that side. Yeah. So I think Mexico has got a great chance of. Yeah, yeah that's right. I, I think I think Mexico has a great chance to get to the finals. And then on this side, I, I'm actually curious to see what US will do tomorrow. I think they're going to rest a lot of first teamers um, and play and, and and basically play basically a second string team that hasn't gotten many minutes. So it'll be interesting to see how not only how they do against Panama tomorrow or actually today when this comes out, right? Yeah. And, and uh, it, it'll be also interesting to see where, who they play against. Because if they play against Jamaica in the quarters, that's a tough game right off the bat. Does it matter where they finish? Do we know who they're going to play next They'll week? Play, or does that result still depend on the other team's It, it game? still depends because okay. uh, obviously we're a couple days behind when, yeah. once this comes out. But I think if they finish second, they'll probably play Jamaica. That's my guess. And if they okay. finish first, they'll probably play El Salvador. Okay, big yeah. difference. Jamaica, Jamaica's upset some teams in Gold Cups. So, the U.S. the U.S. Yeah, in 2015, yeah, exactly. I think it yeah. was. So. And they played Mexico in the final. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Hopefully, they, hopefully they do well. I'd, I'd like I said, I'd love to see a U.S. Mexico. That those rivalries are always great, especially when you're playing for something. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And I and we wish Walker the best. I think he's been playing yeah exceptionally well this year. Uh, yeah. I told him I think he's he's. I mean, he had a good season last year, but I think defensively he's been at a different level yeah. compared to where he was last year. And so yeah. that's great to see for LAFC and for the national team. Yeah, I think he'll probably be on the short list of Defender of the Year when it's all said and done with how well he's played. So, yeah. Uh, and make sure to him. listen to his podcast, his yeah. podcast, The Locker, the Locker Room, Room. Yeah, yeah. under the LAFC umbrella. You can find it, I think, uh, on pretty much any. I know you can find it on Spotify. That's where I listen to it. And, um, and next week, Sal... We're already moving on to next week because it's pretty exciting. The show's getting bigger and bigger. Now we're yeah. starting to find out, you know, people have heard about it. And so yeah, when they're, I they're actually... contacting us to get on our show, you know, <laughs> we don't not, even it's need not to there send yet. out feelers. <laughs> it's not there yet, but I did have a, uh, a quick text with this next. I, I won't say who it is, but I, I texted him and he said anything for the Benny Sal podcast. So he didn't even know what I was going to ask him first. But right. he right away, you know, assumed that could be it. And so yeah. he'll be here. And he's a, an MLS legend, but as we both agreed, a much more important Twitter legend. Yes. And, and he'll we, be. We've played with both. I mean, at some point in our career, we've both played with him. Stand up guy, you know, always very insightful. Good on, good on the camera. So I'm sure he'll have some good insights. That's right. And I think that's all we got for you guys yeah. today. Where, where can they find us, Benny? So why don't you uh, let, it, let them know. Let the audience know. And as always, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, download or stream on TuneIn, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play. Rate and comment on Instagram and Twitter. And obviously email us our, all your thoughts on Benny Sal, the podcast at gmail.com. We love having you guys talk about our podcast, tweet about it, Instagram about it whatever all the words are. Um, we love you guys and uh, 
Let's keep this rolling. Love you guys. Thanks for downloading.